Vijay Lakshmi is only 15 years old, but she has been married since she was 11. In a few months, she will move in with the family of a husband she doesn't know. There, she will cook, clean, tend the livestock, and most likely start having children of her own. She has no choice. I regret being married young, but what can I do? I hope this doesn't happen to others. In Nepal, two out of five girls are married by age 18, even though child marriage is against the law. Campaigns against the practice are starting to have an impact, but the change is coming too slowly and too late for many. Too late for Shanti, age 16. Like BJ Lachmi, Shanti was formally married before puberty. She has lived with her husband Ramesh and his family since she was 14. Every day I cook the morning meal for my in-laws, feed the livestock, clean out the shed, watch the cattle in the field, cook the afternoon meal and then clean all the pots, all by myself. Life is hard because my husband earns nothing. Ramesh, 17, left school after fifth grade and has no job. Shanti gets lonely when Ramesh goes to India to do manual labor, leaving her with the in-laws. I love my husband and I don't want him to go away, but we are poor. That's a reality. I'm married now, I have to bear my fate. But I've told my parents, please let my sisters stay in school. Child marriage traps girls in a continuum of violence, discrimination, and abuse. Soon after marriage, girls are pressured into bearing a child, preferably a son. Many start bearing children before their bodies are ready, putting them and their babies at risk of deadly complications during childbirth. About half of the girls worldwide affected by child marriage live in South Asia. This harmful practice persists for various cultural and economic reasons. But the common thread that runs across all ethnic groups and religions is the low status of women and girls. A number of initiatives have been launched to inform communities about the harm caused by child marriage and the benefits of keeping girls in school. One successful campaign is called Choose Your Future, initiated in 1998 by UNFPA, the United Nations Population Fund. It teaches girls who are not in school about health issues, basic life skills, and empowerment. The government of Nepal has embraced the program's approach, scaled it up throughout the country, and added health and livelihood support components in what is now known as Adolescent Development Program. Choose Your Future teachers try to persuade parents to let their daughters return full-time to school, which was made free for girls through grade 10 in 2009. Many do so. Girls in Choose Your Future take its message of empowerment seriously. Some have started to take matters into their own hands. 15-year-old Usha was chosen by her peers to lead her Choose Your Futures class. Then she learned her parents were planning her marriage. I was thinking, I'm the class leader. If I can't prevent my own marriage, who will speak up for my classmates? So I confronted my mother with the help of my friends. Usha's class learned that child marriage is illegal. They told her parents that they would inform the authorities if they went through with the marriage. The parents relented. Not long after, Usha was able to resume her education. After Usha took her stand, other girls in the group also resisted marriage plans. Some of their parents complained that delaying their daughters' marriages would cost them money, since the dowry a bride's family must pay increases as she gets older. Yes, child marriage is a problem, but look at it from my side. It will be harder to marry my daughter when she's older, and I have younger ones at home. Community awareness campaigns to stop child marriage have included radio spots and street theater by children's clubs. Now there is a push to step up prevention efforts, including advocacy work with men and boys. 
In 2013, Nepal launched a national plan of action for the holistic development of adolescents. UNFPA and UNICEF, along with many other partners, are supporting its implementation with a new package of social and financial skills training for adolescents. Usha knows it pays to let girls stay in school instead of getting married. She answered clearly when asked what she'd like to become. After I finish school, I could be a teacher or a doctor or at least a shopkeeper. With strength and commitments to end child marriage, one day soon, more girls like Usha may be able to stay in school and really choose their futures.